So today it's, it's uh, look, it's the, the Michael and Stefan show. We're going to talk a little bit about data, of course. Um, unfortunately, my background, if you like, forces me to use the word data. I've tried adjusting to make people happy, but it doesn't work. So as a rough overview or agenda, um, we're going to look at BIM. Obviously, we all know what BIM is, but then talk about how that interacts with, obviously, our cloud, and then have a look at some other uh, interesting products on the tail end. Um, and it's interesting that we talk about data because we find that most businesses, they produce lots of this in their models and a lot of people don't actually ever use it. Some do, um, but some don't. So if we look at BIM, we all know it's building information modeling. Um, I always sort of irk at this term actually because back in the late 90s when I first started, my career, uh, we were doing BIM, but nobody called it BIM. We were just modeling 3D components with data. <laughs> and then somewhere along the line, this BIM came along. But uh, BIM for me is so important because it's in every aspect, in vertical construction, horizontal construction, um, and it's becoming more and more prevalent as we go along. You know, being able to reduce human error, make more efficiencies, um, optimize that design. We all know fixing something in the model is much easier than fixing it out on site, right? Hence, as Eddie suggested, you know, do all the work in one place and then take it out to site. But it's the, the eye in BIM that we're going to concentrate on today of information. Say the word. <laughs> Data. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if we look at, a, look at a model such as this one, right? I mean, what is the airflow running through this duct? Um, what is the volume of water that's coming out of this, this sprinkler head, right? And it's this information that helps us make decisions. Um, and I can tell you many stories from many years ago where, you know, convincing people to 3D is the way to go, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, we'll just do that bit in 2D. And then all of a sudden, where was the problem? That one place where we didn't use it and weren't able to analyze that information that is actually in those models. But what does it sound like when we bring that data and bring it into the cloud? <laughs> so the Autodesk Construction Cloud, hopefully most of you have heard about it by now. Uh, if you haven't, please let me know so I can uh, harass our BD team uh, to chase you guys up. <laughs> so the Autodesk Construction Cloud is actually an ideology that we came up with with, uh, with you guys, with our clients, thought leaders. Um, Autodesk is really known in the design space, of course. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of good tools in the design set, and we, we do have some great project management tools, but our construction clients were asking for more out of our tools. And so we went back to the drawing board, and we came up with an ideology of being able to cover everything from design, planning, building, and operations. And the way that we really saw this happening was this shared data platform. So we could share models, drawings, issues, assets, all that information across all phases of construction. No longer were we siloed, downloading information from one to the next to the next, and you know, spending most of our time uploading and downloading information. So how do we go about this? Well, Autodesk was really good about this. Instead of going back to the drawing board and you know, spending years in development on tools that we already had, like BIN360, which is a great tool, by the way, don't get me wrong, BIN360 is still you know, used by some of the biggest companies in the world, including you know, Microsoft and Disney. But for construction, it was just missing a few things. So Autodesk, with this ideology, actually put its money where its mouth is and actually went to market acquiring best-in-breed solutions to bring into the, our solutions to make it quicker to be able to bring this to market for you guys. So we started our journey, of course, BIN360 building, being the building blocks for this. We bought a uh, plan grid, uh, which many of you may have heard of, which is a mobile first site management tool. We bought Building Connected, which is a bid tendering subcontractor risk management software. And we acquired Assemble, which is a 3D model conditioning uh, quantity takeoff software. We've also acquired multiple other systems uh, since, including Pipe, which is a submittal software, and recently uh, ProS, which is a new estimating platform that we acquired in December. 
Now, when we acquire these platforms, we can't just go in and uh, turn them into our unified platform. We first uh, integrate these in, connecting the, uh, these systems together. So again, you guys don't have to download and upload between the systems. But our ultimate goal is to actually bring a fully unified platform to you guys in the market. We did this last year, uh, launching three brand new products, uh, being Autodesk Bing Collaborate, which is our model, uh, our Revit work sharing, um, and our uh, clash detection software. Uh, we also brought Autodesk Takeoff, which is our 2D, 3D quantity takeoff software, and Autodesk Build, which is project management, cost management, quality, safety, and project closeout. But again, the basis of this is this shared data platform where they're all built on top of the Autodesk Docs environment so uh, that you can share all that information that I was talking about before. Shared data, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a show of hands here, Who, who's actually utilizing the Construction Cloud or BIM 360 in this space? Okay, so some, some people do know what we're referring to. Um, so hopefully this isn't, um, I guess, old hat for new for some people. But when we bring together BIM and the cloud, we come back to what we would refer to at Autodesk as connected BIM. Um, being able to break down those silos from working behind that firewall and including the collaboration with others, right? Um, we spoke about it last night at dinner. How do we break down those silos, get more people to talk to each other during that design process? And um, what what I like to talk about is the fact that the design tools that we are very strong in at Autodesk, you know, Revit's, Plant3Ds, even AutoCAD to some degree, right, it's still out there, together with the construction cloud, actually works together very nicely when thinking about everything from design through to construction. And that the construction cloud piece is that data piece or the data repository, right? Um, being able to collaborate in the cloud means that we can share resources with contractors, with other people, um, with other disciplines. We can work together earlier, but still in a somewhat segregated and controlled environment, giving us the ability to coordinate and leverage each other's information earlier, as opposed to sharing physical files as we do in the past. Plenty of case studies, I'm probably not gonna dwell on this, but being able to see from a timeline perspective of exactly who submitted what and when. Now, th this particular feature is it's not that heavily used at the moment. Some people are just using a single repository. But the features of being able to see from a timeline perspective of who submitted their changes and when and who's consumed and used those changes, um, or even what is the difference between version 6 and version 7, or if you want to look at version 2 against version 11, all this is possible in this space. Ultimately, that docs piece becomes that storage of that data, but then, of course, bringing in the Revit cloud sharing. What I find super interesting is because I cover many tools inside the AEC collection, um, the, the cloud collaboration piece that exists in the construction cloud actually applies to quite a few, I think it's about three of our products so far that have been enabled in this space. So from a long-term perspective, especially because Autodesk's focus long-term is cloud platform and data, this becomes a whole lot more important. So again, it's the I in that space. And a common graphic that I like to show you, and myself being, um, I'm very passionate about data, um, I'm very enthusiastic about Power BI, being able to take that information, slice it, dice it, have a look at it. Um, I mean, especially when I'm working with my teams internally inside of Autodesk, I find having access to that information is what gives you insight to actually make those better decisions, right? And it, it may sound like a, a potential slogan, but honestly, if I think about some of the things that we decided to do and not do last year, just from an execution perspective, it's the data that gave me the opportunity to do that you know, which you may or may not known before. So how else can we use that data? Maybe, Michael, you can show us. <laughs> uh, assemble. Assemble is actually one of my, my passion uh, projects within Autodesk. I was so happy when uh, I actually got to work on it. Uh, where does Assemble come into play? Well, Assemble comes into play after we've gone in and done the design collaboration and the design reviews. 
We go in, we perform the clash detection, and then we can move into model conditioning. So that's all that BIM data management, you know, that change management, that work in progress, all those sorts of things can be handled out of one system with Assemble. These are the things that you can actually see within here. The one area that you're probably noticing here with a big red uh, square or rectangle next to it is it doesn't do a 2D quantity takeoff. You don't really need to, but if you do, we do have a tool called Autodesk Takeoff for that. But it does do that design trending, flexible model conditioning. For those who don't know what model conditioning is, model conditioning is adding information into the model and basically adding any information that's relevant to you. Uh, also, BIM-based scheduling and working place tracking. These are the three main workflows that come out of Assemble, uh, model-based quantification and showing changes, the data management and the model conditioning, and working place tracking as well. So when we talk about you know, the I in BIM being information, that's really what Assemble is. It's information in and information out of a model, and being able to do, do that without being a BIM manager or a BIM expert. Um, it does do uh, have a bi-directional push uh, published from Revit, but you can bring information directly back from Revit, uh, from uh, Assemble back to Revit as well. Um, it also allows for publishing of uh, from Navisworks or any of the common data environments from Autodesk, either Autodesk Docs or BIN 360 Docs as well. But it also supports, you know, IFC models, you know, tech files. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, any model base can pretty much be brought into here as well. Now, uh, it also, when, as soon as you bring the, the model in, it automatically brings up your full bill of quantities in there. You'll have the model in there as well, and you'll also have the Revit sheets in there. The great thing is that you can quickly, if you select either on the, the bill of quantities or the model or on the Revit sheet, it'll automatically replicate on the other two as well. It also allows you to quickly go in and separate things by a color, a color by property field which means that when we're looking at a building, you know, we can actually quickly see what each item is by their actual individual colors as well for those categories or those individual items. It also supports data trees, which is really important. Um, you know, we'd love for our designers to put more information into the model, of course, not hacking on any designers here. Um, <laughs> one day it'll happen. But with, with Assemble, we can actually bring all that information directly into the model as well. So if somebody doesn't go in and put you know, cost codes or you know, classification systems in, they can all be brought in uh, directly to Assemble as well. These can be work breakdown structures uh, as well. And you can bring in employee information, subcontractor information. It doesn't matter. Whatever information you need to bring into the model, you can bring directly in as well. Okay. Um, when I talk about the conditioning tools inside here and flexible uh, settings and views within the system, what takes you a long time to do, and I love Revit, um, but something that may take you a little while to do in Revit, this can instantly be done uh, in Assemble. Quickly go down, you can filter information to the way that you want to view it, because a lot of the times we're trying to get look in a model, we're trying to figure out what we actually want to look at, or well, you can quickly filter that down within uh, Assemble and um, create your own views for whether it's you know, for manufacturing or for your site guys on the way that they're going to be able to consume that data. <laughs> data. <laughs> <laughs> and you, of course, you can save these views for people to use out on site in the mobile interface as well. Okay. Uh, inventory grouping is pretty cool as well. Again, this is really uh, important for the site guys when they're working on information. So often, the, you know, if they've got a model, they've got to go into the categories and they're, they're looking and going, hey, which floor is this on? Within something in Assemble, you can quickly go in and group these down by, you know, levels, floors, types, categories, and be able to view this uh, information in the way that that contractor needs to consume it as well. And again, you can go in and color it by property so they can see it the, you know, in an easy to consume format. And again, it can be done by anybody. Uh, the model comparison tool, I, I come from the QS you know, world once upon a time. I even remember the reasons why most construction companies do have big boardroom tables was because people used to have to go and put their drawings out on them, lay them out, start measuring up uh, to go and actually use them. 
And then I noticed when we got into, you know, on-screen takeoffs, that was the next level. You know, we were halving the time that it took us to do our actual takeoffs. Well, then we're actually going in even to a next level when we move into model-based uh, quantification. You can see the, this uh, model comparison tool. If you're doing a variation, this literally takes two seconds to be able to go in and compare two models and actually compare the variances in cost. You can quickly see what's added, removed, uh, type only changed, or according to your own individual needs. One of the quickest ways to do a variation. Uh, it does link in directly to our uh, common data environments, Bin360 Docs and Autodesk Docs as well. Um, the great thing about this is that if we want to bring any of our documentation, you can just bring it straight in, attach it to the model where you need to. These could be things as simple as uh, an ITP or a, you know, a JSA or something like that as well. You've also got the ability to create issues within Assemble and those issues will go into the common data environments and technically can flow up to things like you know, Revit and Navisworks if they need to. Issues just being tasks, guys, if you don't know, uh, which is really cool. Also, you can now publish directly from these common data environments, which means that you know, BIM designers and BIM managers no longer have to go in and publish this information down from Revit, consuming their time. They just put it in the common data environment and then everyone else can go in, or whoever needs to, and publish the model up from the common data environments. There is also a mobile app uh, which does have offline capabilities as well. So again, our site teams can consume this information that they need out on site. So the same information we're seeing in the office now is available directly to the guys who are actually doing the work. And of course, if they notice issues, they can raise those issues directly out on site. That can go directly through to our designers to make changes and directly publish back down as well. Um, Great for things like uh, asset information if it needs to be added into the, the platform as well because you can go in, there's a built-in barcode scanner to scan assets in. You can add serial numbers, barcodes. Um, and there's also a really cool timeline feature so you can actually go in and see your model over time, what it's going to build up to, which is really cool. It also has a actual integration with Excel. So this isn't just a simple export to Excel and then import from Excel. This is actually a live integration, which means at any time that we need other information from external parties, we can just export that directly to Excel, give these to these external parties, i.e. You know, vendors for pricing and stuff like that. That's changing every day now, as we know. And then we can bring that information straight back into the model uh, for our uh, estimates uh, in our takeoff packages. We also have a schedule integrator as well, so if you need to bring your schedules in from something like P6, Primavera, uh, you can actually go in and bring your full schedules directly into the models as well. This is great for your timeline tracking, uh, which is really important, especially for your, um, your activities, uh, for the guys to actually work on these out on site. So a really nice way to be able to go in and enrich your model by bringing in those schedules. It also has a live Power BI in, uh, integration as well. Now, I've talked about this before with clients, and they always go, oh, I can just export that to Excel, and I can do that in Power BI myself. But this is a live integration, which means as our teams are going in and updating information, i.e. completions, uh, you know, schedules, you know, adhering to that, all that information is coming live into Power BI as well. So that progress tracking, you know, information, you know, your budget information uh, within there, your, you know, your variation costs, all coming in live directly to Power BI. So someone that doesn't want to go in and, you know, learn a new software like Assemble, which is pretty easy to learn, um, you know, like C-levels can actually come in, see that data in the way that they need to consume it. And back to you with data. Data. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you touched on the Power BI thing because that's well, it's Power BI. Just the, the yeah. It's, <laughs> what can I say? Oh, let's not dwell on it. So we've got a couple of takeaways for you as the audience. Something to think about, right? So, um, what data could you leverage from your existing models? Um, um, as a point of interest, uh, you know, it's it's not just the linear metage of components or the count of the items. Um, I've seen people leverage the data, for example, for model checking, right? Looking for things that are not expected to be in the model based on properties, right? So being able to sit down and say, hey, there's this property that doesn't exist. It shouldn't be in that model. Now, whether that's done through Dynamo, whether it's done through other forms, it's still it's another form of leveraging information. 
you know, what, what other data could you include in your designs to add value into those downstream processes? So if I think about the first families that I saw created in Revit back in whenever we first started with, with Revit and think about now, some of the people's families have got like pages and pages of uh, properties. But how much are we actually using those properties? And when we, other people who are first starting their experience with Revit and believe it or not, we're still coming across customers today who just use pure 2D, who when we show them Revit for the first time, they're like, wow, this is cool new technology. And I'm like, no, this has been around for many years. <laughs> but everyone has to go through that journey and then they go through that same process. So, you know, and then of course those external sources, right? You know, how, how can we lever leverage this stuff to make better decisions, right? From a design perspective and thinking about those downstream processes. A lot of our design um, departments are very siloed in their thinking. I'm only responsible for this, but identifying an issue based on the fact that you can see, you know, that's going to be too heavy to lift in place or, you know, something along those lines, being able to pass that information to, down to make better decisions for that end customer as we go forward. The expression that I'll leave you with that I like, it's what you don't know is what you don't know. And sometimes that information or data in that model is what's going to give you that upper hand for that next component. With that, I will hand it over for Q&A. Um, good. good, thanks, Charlie. Um, I think um, we do have a question for online we'll, we'll get to in a sec. I suppose one of the things I just wanted to, I was curious about, and apologies if you showed it, but um, going through uh, assemble and, and tracking things on site um, and then, um, you know, having, uh, I guess, alterations or changes on site, is that something you see um, as an external process to assemble in terms of being able to capture that? Uh, and then pushing it back into the model to, to get accurate as built. So how do you sort of see that evolving, or is it something you're working on? It, it's two ways. Um, when you're thinking about assemble, it depends on what information is we're trying to record out on site. If these are simple things like you know form information and stuff like that, we do have a lot of clients that use assemble in collaboration with our Autodesk build platform, which does allow for the site guys to be going in and filling out you know ITPs and stuff like that out on site. Once they fill those out, then we can go in and then attach that to the model within assemble. A lot of people, and <laughs> Stefan might uh, hit me over the back of the head for this, a lot of people see Revit as their source of truth when it comes to information. Now, when a lot of people start using something like assemble, what they start to realize is, well, actually, this actually holds a lot of our information, especially from a construction standpoint, and they start to actually say, well, actually, now we're using assemble as our source of truth. This is where all our information is going to be held. Um, but just to answer your question, yeah, look, it depends on your own individual workflows. Um, and everyone has different workflows. You know, that's what makes our industry so cool. Everyone has little different ways of doing things. Um, of course, Assemble can handle it if you needed to do it directly from the mobile app, depending on what you're trying to achieve, um, especially you know, if there's changes, they've noticed something that wasn't picked up through multiple reviews and processes, then an issue can be raised. And then that information can be directly uh, assigned to a designer to make those changes. I don't need to sit there making it go through 20 different channels before it actually gets to that designer anymore. It's just straight with them. There's an issue, they've got a notification, they'll go and make the changes, publish down the model, and then I'll even be able to see what's actually changed within there, what's been removed as well. So, but again, outside of that, Autodesk Builds platform as well does allow for all that other information that people like to capture, whether it's in a more conventional way or uh, you know, going to the next steps like something like Assemble. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, well just, uh, if there's anyone in the audience that's keen for a question, let us know. I'll just, um, we've got two, okay. So that's the first one there, yep. Okay, understanding Revit um, or BIM is used for design documentation for tender purposes, uh, but how does your uh, cloud software incorporate appropriate construction and or um, piping solutions for seismic, uh, thermal growth, building movement, et cetera, into the installation? So 
Well, do, you wanna, do you want me to? That's, that's a really, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hairy question. No, I'm not sure I want to touch that one. A tough one at you. <laughs> um, uh, uh, to be honest, I, I'm not sure how to answer that. I mean, we've, there, there's lots of different an software analysis tools out there to do the analysis of this stuff. But um, really, Revit is more that documentation piece, right? That modeling, trying to understand what it is that you have in that space that you're trying to create that new asset. So I think the, I guess the analysis components, uh, and maybe there's add-ons out there for Revit that I'm not aware of that might do this. I mean, Revit has a massive add-on library per se, so there possibly is something that already does this analysis out there, but um, for, as a general rule, it's, it's the Revit's purely there for that documentation piece. Yeah, sure. If you are talking about that analysis information and wanting to capture that information, that's what Assemble's for. So if you're creating a tender package, you've got certain piping, you can say, you know, what sort of uh, restraints or, you know, information that you need to know about that actual piece of piping that you've actually selected, then that's all available. You just need to bring that into the actual model itself. So the great thing about Assemble is you can create as, as many Assemble properties as you want to. An Assemble property is just a custom field, which means that you can go in and record whatever information is relevant to that individual tender process. Um, it won't go in and do an analysis for you, <laughs> as Stefan said, but if I need to record that information somewhere and I need to come back to it at a later stage, then it's all gonna be there. Or if I need to supply that to the vendor or the subcontractor, then that's directly available in the model. Probably one of the things, and I probably should have mentioned it earlier, and I hope you don't mind me jumping in with this. One of the things that I love about Assemble is that that intellectual property of that model, by the way, is yours. No one can come in, if you've got subcontractors, because Assemble, you can bring all your sub subcontractors in or vendors into the system, clients. No one can go and download that model from Assemble. And it's one of the things that people worry about with actually giving models out is losing that intellectual property. And that's one thing that Assemble, you, can't, you can give all the information, I need all the quantities, I need all this other data, but when it comes to the model, I can't just go and steal somebody's model. There's no availability for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, is it this? Is this not the same? That's the same, a different one? Okay, uh, you mentioned outside Revit, um, BIM models uh, can be integrated into the overall model. Um, i.e. HVAC plant rooms, designs, does that include engineering solutions for noise attenuation, associated spool sheets, and bombs from specific manufacturers? I think that almost sounds similar kind of tone to the previous question. Um, I, would actually, I would actually say that those sorts of documentations that you're referring to, the, I guess the, the specifications that come with those third-party items that we specify in our design, that's where the construction cloud comes into play, right? Because mm. there we can attach all those documentations you know, potentially provide hyperlinks as a property, as part of those elements inside our models so that when you are inside viewing the model in the construction cloud space, you've got direct link straight to that specification or that document as well. Yeah, and then adding to that level, once that information, you know, if that information changes, you know, different material ends up getting used, um, what you can actually do in assemble is add that information into assemble and if it's under the instance and type field, then bring that back to the Revit model as well. Even better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Any uh, questions from the audience? Include yes, and the audience is very data savvy. <laughs> 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 data, we've got another one. I love it. All right. No I uh, hand back to, to Charlie. Yeah, it's all good, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks.